When it comes to cyber noir and sweeping visions of the future, who wore it better? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be comparing the original Blade Runner to its 2017 sequel to determine which one dreams of electric sheep, and which one passes the Voight Conf test. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Because we'll be getting into the nitty gritty of it, a spoiler warning is in effect. Round 1, Cultural Impact. She's a replicant, isn't she? I'm impressed. When Ridley Scott brought Blade Runner to audiences back in 1982, it blew freaking minds. The visuals, the music, the gritty future, the fully realized world, complete with cultural progression, the way the whole thing was slowed down, was such a stark change to almost every sci-fi film to date, which were predominantly fast-paced with lots of action and sparkling set pieces. While it was not a huge smash hit upon initial release, its cult status grew over time, and in 1993, it became preserved in the United States National Film Registry. The dialogue and music have been sampled more than any other 20th century film, and it is thought by many critics to be one of the greatest sci-fi films of all time. Blade Runner changed the game of visual storytelling in all genres. Wake up! Time to die. <laughs> Blade Runner 2049 is both stunning visually and satisfying on whole, and French-Canadian director Denis Villeneuve did a brilliant job in bringing back the atmosphere and the tone of the original while also expanding the world and adding new details. However, the fact that it was an extension of the first film certainly hurts its overall impact factor. A great sequel, especially since it was released 35 years after the first, it certainly did not reinvent the genre and just did not have the same mind-blowing effect of the first one, simply because it was living in the very legacy that the original provided. Winner, Blade Runner. You ever see this girl, huh? Never seen a puzzle of The license is in order, pal. Round two, visuals and music. Next subject, Kowalski, Kowalski Leon. Leon. The visuals of the original were groundbreaking, and Ridley Scott's vision created a world like no other on screen to that date. The music by composer Vangelis, which as we mentioned, is incomparably sampled in other compositions, is instantly recognizable. Together, they immerse the audience into the hard-boiled cyberpunk noir in a way that's so familiar, yet totally alien. The special effects were some of the most innovative ever employed, using matte paintings, multi-pass exposures, and using all of the practical effects available. Not only do they stand up well, but to this day, they are considered some of the best ever. In Blade Runner 2049, they were able to take that look and feel of the original and build on it. Rather than try something new, they developed the world so that it was bigger, grander, and perhaps closer to what the filmmakers had originally envisioned. With more settings than just rainy future LA, we also get the sense of the entire world of Blade Runner thanks to stunning effects work that's given plenty of room to breathe with the help of Roger Deakins' incredible cinematography. It is also one of the rare cases where somehow a film overtakes the original. Winner, Blade Runner 2049. <laughs> Round 3, The Villains. In the original, the rogue replicants Pris, Roy, and the others act as the main antagonists, but they are more than just villains. They are complicated characters whose main objective is not to conquest or the harm of others, they just want to live. They may kill in order to achieve their goals and even be cold-blooded about their kills, but ultimately they are creations that are self-aware and, like real humans, do not want to die. This makes Deckard's race to find and retire them all the more complicated. In their final conflict, Deckard is spared by the replicant leader, Roy, and it is not Deckard who offs him, but his own programming. The iconic speech Roy gives when he's powered down helped to establish Blade Runner as one of the finest and most compelling pieces of sci-fi out there. All those moments will be lost in time. Like tears in rain. So I had to kill you. In the sequel, the villains are part of the Wallace Corporation, the successor of the Tyrell Corporation after it went under. They make replicants and dabble in genetic research and experiments, such as cloning. Well, let us see her then. Their sketchy agenda is pretty much on the table from the start. Their desire is to learn how replicants might reproduce, basically so they don't have to go through the cost of making new ones, and can create a cost-efficient labor force of slaves. Neander Wallace, the creepy CEO of Wallace Corp, played by the ever-on-point Jared Leto, is the quiet menace to the terrifying brutality of Sylvia Hawke's love. 
the Wallace Corporation's replicant enforcer. They're nasty, but their blunt evilness is not quite as impactful as the nuanced villains of the first film. Winner, Blade Runner. Not very sporty to fire on an unarmed opponent. Round four, the plot. You think I'm a replicant, don't you? The plot of the original is slow and beautiful, zeroing in on Deckard and the rogue replicants. The story of Rachel and Deckard and their developing relationship is compelling and memorable. Despite its linear development, the plot can feel hard to follow. This, of course, has much to do with not only the level of subtlety employed and the blessed lack of clunky exposition, but the fact that it was breaking new ground in storytelling and developing a world that audiences were unfamiliar with, all while trying to tell a compelling narrative. Memories. You're talking about memories. Replicants live such hard lives, made to do what we'd rather not. In Blade Runner 2049, there are clear objectives, and the plight of the main character is more or less upfront. It retains the subtle, engaging neo-noir atmosphere of the original, but raises the stakes, introducing new elements, characters, and dilemmas that go far beyond a world-weary beat cop on a case. It also had the advantage that the world was already developed, and while such a fact wins no points on the innovation department, it did help the filmmakers because they already had an established world to play in, and audiences because they had a familiar world to enjoy and understand. More sprawling in scope, Blade Runner 2049 is not only entertaining, but it never gets lost in itself. Winner, Blade Runner 2049. I know you're here. Round five, the Blade Runners. Move! Get out of the way! Stop. We can't really say enough about late 70s and early 80s Harrison Ford. He was killing it in every genre, and future noir was no exception. Ford's Rick Deckard is a world-weary, semi-retired cop with the replicant detection division of the LAPD. He's a quiet and complex character, made even more so when his very humanity is called into question, an intriguing query that is left open-ended at the conclusion of the movie, at least in the director's cut, and has been debated hotly ever since. Too bad she won't live, but then again, who does? Ford was a master of subtlety in portraying the character, with his expressive eyes and commanding presence bringing so much to Deckard as his conviction to his job, his morality, and even his very humanity are called into question. You can pick up your bonus. Thank you, sir. Meanwhile, Ryan Gosling's Officer K is, in every way, mechanical. A perfect Blade Runner as well as a replicant. He almost never fails his baseline test and has a reputation for getting the job done. However, despite his emotional journey, which drives him to the very brink and forces him to question everything he knows about himself, the character is just not as memorable as Deckard. As a true believing Blade Runner slash android, Officer K is inscrutable, a performance which in less talented hands than Gosling would have been wooden. But by the same turn, he lacks the essential humanity of Deckard, which lessens the connection felt by audiences. I know it's real. Deckard's journey is turned outward, reevaluating society and his role in it, while Kay's is turned inward, a personal emotional struggle which makes for good storytelling but blunts empathetic audience impact. Winner, Blade Runner. Shakes. Me too. Passing the Void comp with 3 2 results, the original Blade Runner is the winner. Do you agree with our choice? Or should our opinion be lost like tears in the rain? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to Watch Mojo for more thought-provoking versus battles. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo, and subscribe for new videos every day.